thank you, thank you. <laughs> now I am the new, the, or then the old Doc Brown, right? You met the, the uh, future Doc Brown. I am the Doc Brown from the past. So if you think you've seen two Doc Browns, we cannot be in the same room at the same time, right? That would ruin the time continuum. But I am here to go back to the future. We're going to go back to a year, 1973. Now, where were you 42 years ago? Looking at this audience, you weren't born. I can tell you're too young. 42 years ago, pff, wasn't even, didn't even think about it. But back in 1972, if you were gonna fly to an event like this, you'd be on a plane full of people who were drinking and smoking all day and then puking. Anyway, it wasn't as pleasant as it is today to fly to an event. In 1972, this is what audio visual looked like. You stick the one thing down, you take it off, put the new one on, right? That's, how we, that's what audiovisual looked like for meeting planners back in 1972. In 1972, the Bradys were a very popular show. It always made me wonder, if Mr. Brady was such a great architect, why did he design a house for nine people with only one bathroom? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, Wonder Woman was uh, an idol for a lot of people back in 1972. And back in 1972, uh, it turns out that only 15% of women worked. Today, 43% work, and earnings went from $13,000 to $39,000. So a lot has changed in that regard. Keith Richards turned 70 years old in 1972. <laughs> it, it just seems that way. He's always been old, right? And in 1972, he said, I'd rather be dead than playing satisfaction when I'm 50. Well, he's 72 years old now, and they were on tour, right? So obviously, be careful what you say. Uh, in 1972, the uh, Houston Astros were playing in the Astrodome, which was considered one of the wonders of the world, the eighth modern wonder of the world. Well, what is the, the real eighth wonder of the world? To me, Donald Trump's hair. <laughs> How does it stay like that? I don't know. But the reason I went back there is because that's when MPI was founded, 1972. Buzz founded this association. So it's been 42 years that you've been meeting, 42 years that this association has existed, 42 years that you've been celebrated as meeting planners. So that's, I think, pretty cool. It's a cool reason to go back. Now, back in the day, this is a good example of how things have changed as far as how much time we have for things. In 1972, you know, we didn't have a lot of time. Today, or we had a lot of time. Now we don't have a lot of time. Homer Simpson said he used to rock and roll all night, then it was every day, then it was every other day. Now I'm lucky if I can find an hour to get funky, right? That's Homer Simpson. I think Ferris Bueller hit it pretty well. He said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And so when you think about how things are different from then to now, we want things quickly, right? So I'm going to go fast today so you can get uh, on the road and home to your weekend. But when you ask someone to describe Socrates, you could do it in four sentences as it relates to his speaking. Socrates was very smart. Socrates lived a long time ago. Socrates gave long speeches. His friends poisoned him. Shorter speeches are better, right? <laughs> now, this is what I know about meeting planners, because I work with a lot of meeting planners. Meeting planners are just like regular people, only faster and smarter. Isn't that right? Yeah. Right? So I thought, since this is the end of the, uh, the conference, it's time for you to high five five other people around you, because what you do rocks. So stand up, find someone, and give them some love. That's what I'm talking about. So this is about how to get good ideas at the speed of thought, right? Because that's how life moves, at the speed of thought. And so we have to keep pace with the speed of life, which is faster than it's ever been. We all know that. So let's talk about how we can not only just survive, but thrive in that environment. And a meeting planner is constantly challenged to think on her feet. Isn't that true? It's always something. And it's always, it always has to be done right away. It's always a crisis mode, right? People wait till the last minute to plan events. And then they wait till the last minute to tell you about changes they want to make. Technology now has raised everyone's expectations. They expect to reply from you in an instant on the weekend. So that's another reason why we have to think quick. And finally, things fall through the cracks, and we have to fix those problems all the time because people don't seem to pay attention anymore to the details. 
contracts, details. You know what I'm saying? So you're always in crisis mode trying to fix things. And this is how the clients kind of, I want it now, daddy, now, right? That's kind of the way it is. They want everything to happen quickly. They want new, improved, and they want it now. And so we have to adapt to that. But that's okay, because in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. And when you see people with that kind of urgency and we can deliver the goods, we look like superstars, superheroes, which we are as meeting planners. And so planners and suppliers both, people turn to you, they count on you for quick solutions, and you can deliver. <laughs> you just have to see <laughs> the light at the end of the tunnel, right? They're so caught up in everything, but you could see the big picture. You could see the, uh, the end of the road. And so we have to start by stretching our minds, using that uh, part of our brain that we don't use as much as we could to think quick. Because it's there, but we just don't use it as much as we should. So I thought the first thing I would do is just answer this question as quickly as possible without really thinking about it. What makes me happy is, and I'm going to throw these, beach, these little happy balls around, just say the first thing out loud and pass it to somebody else, and then we'll get these going around the room. So I'll just keep tossing them out there. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, so just say, <laughs> you have a request. So just say the first thing that pops here, what makes me happy is if you don't have a ball in your hand, just say it out loud anyway. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh my God, Kathy, I got you in the head. I wasn't aiming, Kathy, I wasn't, I swear. <laughs> All right, so you just say the first thing that pops in your head, and that's usually the truth. That's the honest truth, right? The more time you think about it, you think about what people want to hear. Probably wasn't a good idea to give you something that you could throw at me. That was, I wasn't really thinking that one through. But when you, when you think on your feet, when you trust your instincts, you go with your gut, usually you get a good answer. And quick thinking is about trusting your first answer, your honest answer, your inner guide, your inner guru, whatever you want to call it, that gives you those answers, but we just have to listen. And so when you, when you think about things like, okay, um, when you see something, tell me what it is, but trust your gut, and then add a little logic on top of your initial response. So what is this? It's Dr. Pepper. Right, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Get it, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, so who is this? A man leaves home and makes three left turns, and when he returns home, there are two masked men waiting for him. Who is the man, and what does he do? Yes, he's a batter. He's a baseball player. He leaves home, makes three left turns, comes home, it's the umpire and catcher waiting for him. Very good. Very good. Another thing we do is we look for patterns. Like, what do you... Just by seeing those three things, does that give you a clue at what this might be about? So chalk, a wall, a home. I'll give you two more or three more. Grass, a score, a glove. Baseball, baseball right, it's baseball. So quick thinking is like seeing patterns faster than others and, and analyzing it and trusting that what your, your mind is telling you is the right thing. And if it's not, adjust. But you have to trust that your first answer is a good answer. So if you were on a deserted island, what is the one thing you would want to bring with you? If you could only bring one thing with you, and you, your spouse, let's just say that's a given, or not. Water, yeah, water. An airplane. An airplane, right, because you don't want to be on the island any longer than you have to. And then you could build a resort. Yeah, I love this, see? That's quick thinking. An airplane, so you could get off, of course. All right, so just off the top of your head, Arnold Schwarzenegger has a big one, Michael Fox has a small one, Madonna doesn't have one at all, what is it? Thank you for saying last name, yes. Could have gone sideways, but kept it clean, good. All right, now, quick thinking is you see something and you can quickly say, oh, I know what that is, or I have an idea. So what would be a good one word description for this picture? Just off the top of your head, what word popped into your mind, right? And why is the cat even there? Cats hate water. They don't like to be around water. They don't swim. Makes no sense, but yeah, there you go. So just on, on the, off the top of your head, you're getting ideas, and those are the things we have to trust more as we go forward. So for one minute, 
Meet someone you don't know. Talk about the things you have in common, but don't talk about this industry, meeting, planning, work, just something else. Try and find the most things you have in common with somebody seated near you, or you can do a group of three or four, and try and work quickly. Quickly find the most things you have in common in under a minute. All right, here we go. Ready, go. Now, the reason that works so well is, well, A, you like each other, theoretically, a lot, <laughs> and B, if you give yourself a deadline or use a timer, it creates a sense of urgency and your brain speeds up. So without a deadline, without a sense of urgency, not that you don't work with deadlines all the time, but creating a sense of urgency speeds up your brain. So when you say, ah, well, I'll get to it whenever, your brain's not working. It's working on other things. It's like, when am I going to eat? You know, all these other, other important things. But they don't think about ideas. So Einstein, talking about our brain, said two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not so sure about the universe, right? Yeah. And so Albert Einstein makes a good point, and uh, we can use it as an example. Nobody is a genius all the time. But we can all be smart and resourceful most of the time. But nobody, to say you're an Einstein or a genius doesn't mean that every single moment of every single day you have to be you know, thinking of things real quick or be uh, an idea person or a problem solver. But most of the time, because even Einstein wasn't an Einstein. And here's Joe Theismann describing Einstein. A genius is someone like Norman Einstein. Joe Theismann is a football analyst. He is no Einstein. All right, we got that right there. But you have an Einstein in you. Everybody has a little Einstein inside of them. It's your young self where you were always trying to think of new things. You really didn't really filter things, whether it was right or wrong. You just, you just thought things through and said, hey, we could do this quickly. We could do anything. That young you, right? <laughs> we have to get back to that. that. That you that was anything was possible. And you know what? We're playtime. We can invent things. We can do anything. And that's a good place to be for a quick thinker. Now, Einstein wasn't always an Einstein in his personal life. So true or false, Einstein had a day job. He worked six days a week as a patent clerk. True or false? That's true. So he's just working a job like anybody else. What was good about his job is it put him around a lot of ideas, and it made him, he absorbed a lot, and then he, you know, he used it in his own uh, inventions and, and ideation. Is it true uh, his office was neat and orderly? That was a mess. If you have a messy office, you're a genius. It's OK. Make a mess. Einstein had a mess. Sings out, makes you think about things, and reminds you about things. And then your brain comes out with a quick solution. It's just need to be reminded. Uh, Einstein usually looked like he smoked an exploding cigar, and so did his office, right? It was a total mess. But he knew where everything was. Einstein was a terrible student and couldn't get or hold a job. True or false? Yeah, he was terrible. In fact, he even considered selling insurance at one point. Can you imagine Albert Einstein coming to to sell you insurance, right? But that was, that was somebody who's considered one of the smartest people of all time. He couldn't get or hold a job. And uh, he also donated his brain to science after he was dead. I should make that clear. After he was dead. Is that true or false, that his brain weighed more than average? No, no it was an average-sized brain. It was a little wired a little differently, but average. So you have the same size brain as Albert Einstein. I'm, all this is to show you that to be a quick thinker, an innovative thinker, a genius, you don't have to say, I went to Harvard or Princeton or Yale. It's a skill that you can develop. He said, I have no special talents. I'm only passionately curious. All of us can be more curious. Is there a better way to do this? Is there a faster way to do this? The more questions you ask, the more answers you get, the more you seem like someone who's always coming up with new ideas. And Einstein believed in intuition. I believe in intuition and inspiration. I sometimes feel that I'm right, but I do not know that I am. He also believed you shouldn't always think logically or analytically. You should use your emotions to try and come up with solutions as much as you should use your logic brain. In fact, the way he described it was, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We honor the servant and forget the gift. So don't ignore that part of your brain that's always giving you good ideas, but we're like, ah, it came too easy. It came too quick. I don't trust it. That's where quick thinkers have an advantage. They believe in themselves. 
So how do we get to that point? Well, the first place to start to become that super innovative, quick thinker, witty, funny, always you know, off the cuff, think on your feet, problem solvers, MacGyver type. Well, the first thing is you have to understand the problem first before you can solve it. So being able to define what it is. When someone is describing it, listen intently. Repeat the question. Try and absorb as much as you can because um, when you are absorbed and listening to what people are telling you they need help with or what the problem is, and if you understand it, you have a much better chance at, at solving it. Um, this woman uh, was uh, on a plane tra- platform and a guy was standing next to her. They got on the train at the same time. He was exhausted and so he just wanted to sleep. So he sat down next to her and they were, you know, just he just closed his eyes and she's talking on the phone going on and on and on. And this was her side of the conversation that he heard. Oh, hi, honey, it's Sue. Yes, I missed the 4.30, I'm catching the 6.30. No, I didn't have a meeting with my boss. I had a meeting with Kevin from accounting. No, you're the only one in my life. Of course I would never cheat on you. You're the most important person. I love you. I'll be home soon. I, I, and then she went on, you know, continued to talk. And the guy had just had enough. And so he was tired of listening to her talk and he was trying to sleep. So he grabbed her phone and he said, Sue, hang up the phone and come back to bed and hung up. <laughs> she doesn't talk on the phone in public anymore, but that's quick thinking. <laughs> See, I thought that was funny. No, not so much. Too, too close to home? Sorry. Yeah. Einstein said, I was lucky to notice what others didn't. A lot of people miss things because they're just so busy going down that road one step after another, one task after another. They don't look around and see things that others might have seen. So you've been here since early this morning. You've had uh, breakouts, the early morning keynote. Now we're together. I want you to pick a person and introduce, reintroduce yourself to someone. So pick one person, stand up, and introduce yourself to them uh, as if you've never met them. Just say hello and... Just quickly, say your name and shake hands. Stand so you can't see each other, so that you're back to back. And then I want you to change one thing about your appearance. And when you turn and face each other, see if you notice what they changed. So change one thing about your look. Move something around, pick something up, put something down, change something and see if they can guess what you did. So the important thing is to pay attention and to never stop questioning. And so by, by paying attention, you could see things that others miss. So here's a, uh, well, it's actually Robert Downey Jr., but as Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes never missed a thing. He saw things that everybody else missed, which made him a quick thinking genius. But it was things that everyone, when he would explain how he figured all these things out, people would say, well, that's so obvious. Yeah, but most people don't notice. So I buried a bunch of things in this picture to see if you would notice. And there's typos, there's added things. Tell me what you see that you think doesn't belong or I change. What do you notice? Yep, good. Yeah, the glasses and the name on the side is is different. Yeah, the date is on there and the tie pin. Yep, the word C should be S-E-E. Yeah, uh, coming out of the pipe, it it says uh, meetings. Yeah, Carlsbad on the glass. So basically, if you just glance at that, you probably go, oh, yeah, that's, you know, that's Sherlock Holmes, and move on. But quick thinkers take in more information. They're more aware of what's going on around them. They have more data to deal with to come up with ideas because they're seeing things that others don't. The average person misses 90% of the things that you see. And that quote um, by Sherlock Holmes is, you look but you do not see is so accurate. So to be a quick thinker, pay more attention to the details because it's easy to overlook clues when you're always super busy, right? You're always so busy you miss things. So look at these items that are up here and uh, kind of take stock of what you see. All right, now what is, uh, what were uh, two things that were up there? Who can name two things? What do you got? Wine, Wine. of course, wine, it was wine! I saw wine. (laughs) I don't know what else there was, some Nutella, but no, there was wine. Right. Yeah. So this, it was Bose headphones, right? You saw headphones, but they were Bose headphones, let me notice. Uh, Black boots, a jar of Nutella, a straightening iron, a sweater with patches. 
a gold watch, women's shoes, and a glass of red wine. But that's where most people just eh, pay attention. Those are the, that's what makes a difference. So you understand better. My wife said she wanted something shiny that went from zero to under 150 in under three seconds. So I bought her a bathroom scale. Clearly, I did not listen. I missed a lot of information that was happening. And then the fight started. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. You know, uh, Orange County has that toll road, the 73. When it first opened, they started giving tickets to people, and they would just send you a picture of you in your car and the ticket, and you were supposed to pay it by mail. Well, the first guy that got one's like, this can't be right. It was $40. It showed him in the car speeding. So he didn't believe it was real. So he made a photocopy of two $20 bills and sent it into the Orange County Police Department. So the Orange County Police Department made a copy of handcuffs and sent it back with a self-addressed stamped envelope. So they made it clear. Because if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. So to help people understand what problem you need help with and to better understand the problem, be able to describe it in a sentence or two. For instance, the turd burglar's slogan says it all in one sentence. Your number two is our number one. Right? It's all one sentence. So clear and obvious, right? So, you know, it used to be you'd say to someone, how you doing? They'd say, I. Or no, they used to say, I'm all right. Now they just say, I. You can't say the whole sentence. I'm too busy. I can't say the whole sentence. Just I. And so, but that's actually something to learn from. Twitter has helped us to really focus on what's important. So when someone's describing the problem, you, you, you know, it's just like, yeah, yada, 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 I need help, right? You, don't, you miss the middle. So just have them summarize it in one sense and get good at doing that as well. The IRS, their slogan is, we have what it takes to take what you've got. <laughs> right? One sentence describes it. You know, companies have slogans, but this should have been WebMD's slogan. <laughs> Convince yourself that you have a terminal illness, right? You look on there, it's a pimple. Oh my God, it's a tumor, right? Or how about Netflix? Spend so much time searching for movies, you don't have any time left to watch them. I'm exhausted, I can't watch anything more. I've seen so many trailers, I'm done. Or the yellow pages, right? Here. <laughs> you throw this away. Right? You see it on your Twitter, what am I supposed to do with this thing? That should have been their slogan. That should have been, what am I supposed to do with this thing? But you should be able to come to a, you know, create a sentence that really describes the problem. And be prepared. It's funny, some people look so quick. Oh my goodness, how did they think of that so quick? Because they're prepared, they've got zingers ready, they have done their homework. Be that person, That's, you're ready, you're running one if scenarios, you're thinking about what might come up, and you're kind of thinking what I might say or what might happen if I called you up on the stage right now. But I'm not, so just relax, you can relax. But be prepared. You know, Southwest Airlines, they always you know, do the uh, welcome on the plane, this is your seatbelt. If you never use one, you probably shouldn't be flying alone, right? Um, but they, they use funny ways to describe some of the safety features. These are prepared, but they sound spontaneous. If you're traveling with small children, put your oxygen mask on first, then your child's. If you're uh, traveling with two or more small children, decide now which one you love the most and put their mask on first, right? Um, or the one who has the most potential. Uh, in order to enhance the appearance of the flight crew, we'll be dimming the cabin lights. There's someone on this plane who's never flown before. Please give a round of applause for our captain. Yay. <laughs> but it sounds so spontaneous, but they have prepared. And take notes. You have great ideas all the time. In flashes of inspiration, but if you don't call your voicemail or text it to yourself or write it down, you lose it. So write down some great ideas so when you're stuck, go back through your old ideas and you can solve a problem, a new problem, with an old idea. This is somebody's idea book with a couple of ideas. I'm not sure when you pedal the bike and the toilet paper goes through, but where does it end up? I don't see that in the diagram. And that kid must be really bad because he keeps getting spanked by this machine. But, but you know, keep your ideas in a safe place. You can go back and look at them, and it seems like you're thinking of things off the top of your head, but you'd already thought of them a while ago. You know, your smartphone can also make you look like a quick thinker and really smart. If you use it to look something up real quick, or you have some things, notes in it that you could just kind of slyly look at and say, eh, you know, and you look like you just thought of it. But I use the phone to take pictures of things, and I use them in my speeches, right? <laughs> so I saw this uh, at SeaWorld Drive. It used to say, no U turn. Now it says, no, you didn't. <laughs> so I took a picture of it, right? Then I could keep it in my phone if I need it for a speech. There it is. This was by the kids' school. Slow children at play. If that pedophile is chasing you, you need to be faster. Run, kids, run. 
that is a creepy looking dude. I don't understand that sign at all. It makes no sense. I saw this guy also at SeaWorld Drive, ironically. Uh, I bet you can't hit me with a quarter. And he was getting pelted with money. I'm like, that's genius. I, I filed that away. Someday I might need to use that. I don't know. Uh, this was in Seattle. How did that get to that point? And someone not say, hey, that's not right. What the? Yeah, it just doesn't seem right. Walgreens. We have all your back to school supplies. $7.99 for a 12 pack of Miller beer. You're going to make it. Parents, you can do this, right? If we can't make you look good, you ugly. <laughs> Facials, waxing, massage, and manicures, right? That says it all. Quit stealing or letters. <laughs> I feel bad. They got the U. They got the U. If you're single, this is a good deal. Buy a bed and get a free one night stand, <laughs> right? I can see people buying three and four beds if you're lonely, right? How about this one? This has to be a typo, right? <laughs> because I don't care how much they're discounted, I don't want them. It's too, that's not good. It's wrong. And then this is at Home Depot. Restrooms, you can do it. We can help. I got it. I got it. I'm a do-it-yourselfer. Thanks, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, use your phone as a tool to be a quick thinker and save ideas and use it to research things to quickly to come up with ideas. And I think really, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but it actually is a good thing to know a lot about a lot of things. Or I'm sorry, a little about a lot of things. Meaning, you know, a little bit about sports, a little bit, you know, so you can sound smart for three minutes and then when that time is up, just bail. <laughs> But you know what I mean? You can start like, I'm a genius. You know everything about auto racing. You know three minutes worth, but that's enough. You know what I mean? So to come up with quick think, to look like a quick thinker, know a lot about a lot of different things, or at least a little bit about a lot of things. I think people who are positive come up with ideas quickly. You have to believe in yourself, and you have to believe in your ideas, and you have to surround yourself with people who are more interested in saying yes than no. No is an idea killer. Yes is a kind of an idea inspirer. I know that's not a real word, but it's, you know what I'm saying. For instance, uh, if you could find a way to say yes to the customer, you could work at Nordstrom. My wife works at Nordstrom. That's their slogan. Find a way to say yes quickly. Don't think about it. Just make it happen within the rules, but try and find a way. And so my wife will be late coming home, delivering a dress over here or shoes over there. At least that's where she says she is. I don't know where. She could be anywhere. I don't know. But that's what she's doing. She's trying to find a way to say yes. And yes is a powerful word, right? Yes, I can. Yes, I'll marry you. Yes, dear. Yes, I work out. Yes, they're real, right? <laughs> All Those are strong sentences. Yes is the key word. And if you have time to complain about something, you had time to do something about it, right? If you waste so much time complaining, that same amount of time could have been spent coming up with a solution. Now, whenever I have a problem, I just sing because my voice is worse than the problem. And so it makes it seem less of a problem. But according to Fast Company Magazine, quick thinkers are usually positive people. So positive people come up with ideas better than negative people. And a positive person at this time of year might say something like, you look like the first day of spring. That's nice, right? A negative person would say, you look like the last day of a long, hard winter. <laughs> right? It's the same thing, but one is much better than the other. Some people are just negative. This was a t-shirt that said, pew, pew, pew. That's the sound of me deflecting your whining with my happiness shield. Right? <laughs> you know, speaking of whining, so uh, sitting on our boat, drinking wine, my wife says, I love you so much, I don't know how I could live without you. I said, is that you talking or the wine talking? She said, no, it's me talking to the wine. <laughs> Thanks for the courtesy laugh. That was nice. Thank you. Oprah says, what you put out, you get back. So if you put out positivity, you know, I can do this, we can do this, let's come up with ideas, we don't need a week, we can do it today, that kind of thinking, it spreads. Negative thinking spreads like secondhand smoke. Just like peeing in, well, how can I say this? Some, in the old days, they used to have these sections in the restaurant, they called it the smoking section, right? But the smoke would go all over. When people pee in the pool, there's no, it goes everywhere, right? So negativity spreads. I know that's a terrible analogy. You can tell when I go off script. That was off, off script. But when you smile, the world smiles back at you, right? So you 
put out positive energy, you get it back. People say, yeah, we can do this, and you get help. And maybe you don't try and solve the world's problems. Start with small, manageable problems, and start with little things that you can change to practice your uh, ability to think on your feet. Maybe every day you change your screensaver. Maybe you have a different salutation than when someone says, how you doing? Eh, I'm all right. Right? That's, what about, I feel great, I'm vegetarian. No, that sounds like you're on drugs. I'm great, right? That's better. Something that's positive, different. Maybe even change your outgoing voicemail every day. This woman said, yes, or no, I'm not available right now. I'm busy making changes in my life. Thank you for calling. Leave a message. If I don't call you back, you are one of those changes. That's good. That's clever. You know, it doesn't take much to impress people anymore. A little something better than everybody else is all they need. People are unhappy with service, right? This woman's right into customer service, and she said, first of all, you should know I'm typing this with my middle finger. Right? That's her first sentence. People are unhappy. But you don't have to change the world. Things don't have to change the world to be important, said Steve Jobs. Little things can make a difference. Little inventions that are just a little bit better. Somebody was thinking quick, someone was thinking smart, and invented something. Last year, what would you say was the most interesting and innovative invention that came out? By the way, this is where you participate. You're like, when did that start? No, it started. Yeah, Apple Watch, genius, perfect. But that's big. I thought small. How about this? You put these on your dog's feet, they run around the house, and they clean instead of make a mess, right? It's genius. And it's just somebody thinking, you know, hey, they see their dog and making a mess. Wait a minute, what if I put little, yeah, little, little uh, rugs on there? I think when you think about creative thinking, it's not something that an account, I mean, creative accounting is bad. That's a left brain. But a, a, an account is a left brainer. A meeting planner is kind of both, right? You've got to deal with all the little details, but you're also, woohoo, you, know, uh, uh, you know, out there coming up with great ideas. But quick thinking comes from that side of the woohoo side of the brain, the right side of your brain. It's like the artist side of you, where you get to create things as a meeting planner that are more artistic, and then you gotta deal with the contracts and all that as well. But the artistic side is where we wanna be to come up with ideas. To get to that side, one simple way is take your pen or pencil or crayon and switch writing hands. It taps into the other side of your brain. Your left hand is connected to the right side of your brain, which is the artistic side and where great ideas are. So if you're right-handed, write with your left hand and start doodling, drawing, writing uh, a list of things. It's totally different than with your other hand. If you're left-handed, well, you're already in your right mind, so I can't help you. It's good, right? See? <laughs> you're already there. We, you're there. But recycling is an example of somebody that just sees something and says, you know what? I have another use for this, another way we could do it. My dad would take an old soda bottle and it would become a sprinkler system. I'm like, that's cool. Just reach in the trash, pull it out. I'm like, so proud of my dad. Yeah, it's great. But it worked. Other times I'm like, huh, I don't think that's a good idea, Dad. <laughs> yeah, or he took a two by four and jammed it in the, you know, in the gas pedal and he called it cruise control before it was invented. Uh, I didn't think that was a good idea either. And then sometimes I'm just like, really, really? This, this is who we are as a family, right? The neighbors are gonna see this. It's like, oh yeah, they're coming over. It's their shopping cart. But he was always, you know, just, you, you know, MacGyver. You see something, hey, I know what I can do with that. That, getting used to doing that, on a regular basis, kind of creates that mindset for you. But people want to be perfect. That's the left side of your brain where everything has to be perfect, and that kills ideas. Imperfection, just giving it a world, giving it a try, whatever, let's just see what happens. That's where quick thinking thrives, not where, well, let me sit down for a while and write and make a list. You know, that's not going to help you get that quick, good idea. But some people, they insist that everything has to be just so, right? You go and get gas. You go over by two cents. You gotta put 98 more cents in to round it off, right? Anyone else like that? You gotta have perfect zeros. When you tip, it ends in zeros at the end. Yeah, see what? That's, that's good it, with the paperwork, but with the creating, we want more uh, chaos. We wanna be more of a non conformist. Cut the sandwich sideways. Uh, you know, everything does not have to be perfectly put away. In fact, leaving some things out that you're working on, you walk by it, you get that burst of inspiration because you see it. What do they say? Out of sight. So the things that need, aren't finished or need ideas, leave them out where you can see them. And you know, everyone's got a different way of doing things, right? I don't know which is right. My wife will, yeah, my wife will say over, but everyone's got their own way. Find your way, way, use your way, right? 
but get outside of the rules. For instance, I want to give you a challenge, but I want you to think outside of the box, which is the, the theme of this conference, right? But if you were to recreate a circle and dot that looks just like this on a piece of paper, how would you do it if once you put your pen down, you couldn't lift it again? How could you recreate a circle and dot that looks just like this without lifting your pen from the paper? Who has an idea? Just off the top of your head, how would you do it? Oh, so you do like a reverse version of it. Yeah, leave a white dot in the middle and, okay, that works. I like it. How would you do it? Right. You would put one pen down for the dot and use the other for the circle. Genius. See? Right off the top of your head. Don't think. Just blurt. Blurt. We want blurting. Blurting is good. What else? Yes. Yeah, just drag it across. It never left the paper, right? Yeah. Good thinking, right? That's genius. That's why you're the head honcho. Yes. Uh, what else? Fold the paper over the dot in the middle to make the smudge around the top. Yeah, so you fold the paper over to move the pen and then unfold it, and then you make the circle, right? Ooh, what, you white ink to erase as you go around? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just click it and then move it, right? One color, just click it. That's, see, that's good. You know, my speech was supposed to start at 420, and I was thinking about that. 420. I could see someone thinking about it. They're going, dude, I would draw the circle and visualize the dot, right? <laughs> but it's about just not thinking, oh, well, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't know if my idea is good. There are no bad ideas. They're just the ideas that aren't ready yet. But they're OK to get them out there. And that's what I mean. Just move forward. Act and react. Take action. Just do it. Move forward, and you'll be fine. You'll think of a new idea if it doesn't work to move it back to where it needs to go or to make a correction. But you have to do something. There was an ad for Handyman that said, I can do anything your husband can do, but I'll do it now. Right? <laughs> so move things along. A lot of people say, I'm going to get organized this spring. Right? And they think about organizing, but they don't do anything. That's Zen organizing, right? I like what's called the Shivanda. Sounds like a Yiddish term. The Shivanda. No, it just means someone's coming to your house, you shove stuff under the bed, you shove it under the car, you shove it under the closet. But things are moving, something's happening. Make things happen and then react and, uh, and act and react, and you'll be fine. But uh, just take a step forward. And so when you think you can't think of anything, um, I'll give you an example. I was uh, at a party, driving home, and uh, it was late at night. I said, you know what? I don't want to go home. Let's just get a hotel. So my wife and I checked into a hotel. We were only there for four hours. We took a nap. We checked out. They said, it's 400 bucks. I said, $400? You're only here for four hours. Don't you have a napping rate? And he said, no, but we have an Olympic-sized pool. I said, my wife and I didn't swim in the pool. I said, it was there. You could have. And I said, but this is too much money. I need a better deal, something for, you know, we barely made a mess in there. Come on. And he said, oh, well, we have an award-winning chef in the restaurant. I said, my wife and I didn't eat in the restaurant. He said, it was there. You could have. And then to add insult to injury, he said, oh, when we have a state-of-the-art convention center. I said, my wife and I didn't use a convention center. And he said, it's there, and you could have. I said, fine. So I, the quick thinker, gave him $200. He said, no, 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 you owe us $400. I said, yeah? Well, I'm charging you $200 for sleeping with my wife. He said, I didn't sleep with your wife. I said, she was here, and you could have. <laughs> right? so. I'm not as good a comedian as you, Stephanie, but I try. I try. I try. Do the best you can with what you have, right? I mean, we think we need everything to make something happen. The Gettysburg Address, only 262 words. You probably think, why is it least speech 262 words? Uh, Einstein. 10 digits to change the world. Uh, Michelangelo, three colors mixed together. Beautiful works of art, right? Beethoven, seven notes and some sharps and flats, but seven basic notes to create amazing works of, of music, powerful works of music. ACDC does it with just two notes. <laughs> just A and D, your power chords. That's it. That's all they need. But if you can do something in under a minute, just do it, right? Don't think about it, let it sit. If it's something quick and easy, do it. Get it off your plate, move on, get it done. If you can do it quickly, that makes you seem, at least for the person you did that thing right away, wow, this person's so quick because it was easy and you just got it done. And I think by surrounding yourself with people that are in it together with you, you know, you form a brainstorming club, an idea club, a wild idea club, a mastermind group, whatever, a bunch of people, there's safety in numbers. 
right? So this principal had a problem. The, the janitor came to her and said, look, we got all these girls putting lipstick on and they kissed the mirror. There's hundreds of mirrors at the end of the day. I don't know what to do. So the principal got together a group, uh, a teacher, a parent, another administrator, the janitor, um, and a student. And they brainstormed ideas, how to solve the problem. And what they came up with was they got all the girls in the bathroom. The principal said, girls, this is John. He has a difficult time cleaning off your lip prints. Show the girls how hard it is every night to clean your, their lip prints off. So he said, well, every night I take my squeegee, I stick it in the toilet, I rub it around, <laughs> and then I squeegee off your lip prints. Nobody wanted to kiss the mirror ever again because it was toilet water, right? But having a partner that you can count on, that has your back, gives you more confidence to, to say something out loud that you maybe wouldn't have said otherwise. And sometimes people are good in crowds saying, uh, jumping out with ideas. Find a way where you could put an idea in an idea box, the old school way, or online. One company had a, wind, or a uh, whiteboard, and every week they had a contest. One contest was, whoever can come up with the best way to save the company money will win $100, right? So one guy writes, cut the prize to $98, and he won. But he would not never speak up in public, but he would write it down. So want people that have your back, like this shirt. I have your back. No, really, I have your back. It's, it's in my hand. The best ideas sometimes don't come from the top down. They come from the bottom up, right? People that are working on the front line sometimes have the best idea. The Ritz-Carlton, they huddle before every shift, the managers and the, the staff, and they talk about what went well, what can we do better. In five minutes, they're thinking of new ideas. And the fact that they're standing, it's before the shift, it's urgent. They are, these people want to get their ideas out quickly, and it seems to work. But don't feel like you know it all, right? You're all meeting planning professionals, CMPs. Uh, how many of you can answer this question correctly? And I have three of them, but true or false? California has the most number of convention centers in the United States. Is that true or false? True. It's true. You're right. That's true. All right, here's the next question. On average, meeting professionals earn an annual salary of over $625,000. Is that true or false? Oh, man, that's a bummer. That's, yeah, that's not good. It'd be nice, right? The largest convention center in the United States is McCormick Place in Chicago. True or false? That's true. The largest convention space is in Chicago. So, you know, we think we know everything, but then you're thinking, do I know the answer to that question? Let people give you ideas. Be open to them. That makes you look good as well. Collaborating is one way that things happen fast. Rather than you by yourself, getting people together can work. Get, uh, the uh, inventor of the post-it note, no, it wasn't Rami and Michelle at their high school reunion. It was Art Fry. And he worked at 3M. He brought the idea back to 3M, and all this, the administrative professionals helped him to get the idea to the next level. So it wasn't just one guy who invented it. And now we have a whole new generation of idea people, the millennials, the Gen Y people. And so people say, you know, what is it about this generation that makes them special? Well, first of all, they had play dates when they were younger, so they're comfortable in groups to ideate, you know, come together and, and form uh, ideas. They're, they're big, big on diversity. They've grew up with diversity. Uh, they love technology. And they want things to happen fast, right? They get hired a week later. Am I promoted yet? Am I president? What? That's the kind of, but that pushes everybody to want to move faster. People say, why are they called Gen Y? <laughs> it's right there. There's a why right there. This is a smart generation, but these are real answers on tests. Where was the American Declaration of Independence signed? At the bottom. <laughs> what is the highest frequency your, uh, noise a human can register? Mariah Carey with some hearts. Yeah. What is a fibula? A little lie. Find X. Here it is. This is easy. But this group expects things to happen fast. 80, 85 million uh, millennials are now in the workforce. They now outnumber baby boomers. So they want things to move fast. We've got to move fast with them. And so we have to work together, different generations working together. So I'm going to use my, my DJ over there to help me with this. But I'm going to play a song. And I want you to try and guess the era. Well, I'll tell you the era. Guess the artist or try and guess the song. And if you don't know, turn to someone you think might know the answer without offending them. OK, here we go. We'll go to the 50s. Who, who knows this one? It's Dean Martin, but it sounds like Sinatra. Very close. Yeah. Let's go to the 60s. 
Steppenwolf, born to be wild. The 70s. Allman Brothers. Yeah, Allman Brothers, Ramblin' Man. The 80s. Journey. Journey, I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> the 90s. Hootie and the Blowfish, right. The uh, 2000s. Kid Rock, very good. And today. Megan Trainer, right? Different eras, but everyone, you know, the same gener different generations, they all love music. Find the commonality. Old and young. This woman said, when I get old, I'm not gonna sit around, or I'm gonna, I'm not gonna sit around knitting, I'm gonna be clicking my life alert button to see how many hot firefighters show up, right? <laughs> old people have ex not old that sounds terrible. Older people, experience they have experience. Younger people have ideas. Those two together, it's a great combination. Now guess what these things have in common? Liquid paper, Kevlar, windshield wipers, fire escapes, life rafts, laser printers, central heating and dishwashers. They all have something in common. All invented by women, sent by a man. <laughs> That's true. All those and several others all invented by women, which is good, right? You're trying to think, well, what do you think is the next big invention? I wonder if that's coming in the future. <laughs> Probably not. Did you know that the first protective cup was used in hockey in 1874, but the first helmet wasn't worn until 1974? It took men 100 years to figure out that their brain was also important. <laughs> a quiet man is a thinking man. A quiet woman is hatching a plan. Right? <laughs> Isn't this true? When men get to so together and socialize, they insult each other, but they don't mean it. When women get together and socialize, they compliment each other. They don't mean it either. Am I right? But men and women, different approaches. You put those two together. Wow, that's a great group of uh, two different approaches to come up with an idea quickly. And people that care seem to be able to come up with ideas faster than people that don't give a darn, right? People that care are much more vested. If you were to finish this sentence, take this job and... Yeah, that's okay. In fact, I have a slide for that because Drew Carey said, oh, you hate your job? Why didn't you say so? There's a support group for that. It's called Everybody. And we meet at a bar down the street, right? <laughs> so it's not uncommon. How about this? Sometimes I feel like I have the worst job in the world, said the toothbrush. <laughs> Toilet paper. Yeah, all right. <laughs> But uh, it's called work because all the other four-letter words were taken. But when you're focused on coming up with quick and good ideas, the day flies by faster. It's like Einstein's theory of relativity. If you take your hand and put it on a hot stove, one minute feels like an hour. When you're doing something you enjoy, one hour feels like a minute. When you're not complaining but instead trying to come up with quick ideas, your brain it just makes the time go by faster. And so someone asked Stephen King, how do you come up with so many gross ideas and so many books and so many ideas for these books. He said, I love what I do. And I have the heart of a small child. And I keep it in a glass jar on my desk. <laughs> so Stephen King. But the more you practice the ability to think quick, the better you get at it. And so Ellen DeGeneres, I don't know if you've seen her early stand up, but when she, had, when she started doing her show, she's so snappy, right? How does she do that? She does it all the time. The more you do it, the quicker you are with your, you know, your retorts and, and uh, replies. The Navy SEALs train for what-if scenarios. So when something bad happens, they've, they've thought it through. So they're the preparing type, and they're ready to act uh, you know, uh, on some uh, something they didn't expect quickly because they planned for it, and they practiced it. Jerry Garcia was a great improviser. The earliest of the jam bands was the Grateful Dead. How did he do it? They were on tour all the time. And fortunately, like songs like uh, Fire on the Mountains, just two notes. So how it's, I could improvise with just two notes. It's not that hard. But he practiced it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So you want to be the best at coming up uh, with good ideas? Then focus on being the best. Beware the lollipop of mediocrity. Lick it once and you'll suck forever, said Brian Wilson. You want to be the best. Jerry Seinfeld was at a wedding and... Uh, he said something to the effect that um, uh, uh, I'm, if I'm the best man, why are you marrying him, right? So be the best at what you do. That was a terrible joke. Sorry. I apologize for that. But you want to be the best. You don't want to be just okay, average. Your ideas are okay. You want to come up with great ideas. And if you don't have any of your own, it's okay to borrow ideas, right? Just adapt somebody else's ideas. Make it yours. It's okay. Who's the most innovative thinker you could think of in the last, I don't know, 20 years? 
Steve Jobs, good, because that's what the slide is. Good, good. I'm glad you said that. But he is, right? He's a, he is the most innovative person that uh, came up with ideas after ideas after ideas. How did he do it? All these things we talked about. But he also said, my model for business was the Beatles. The name Apple, the record company of the Beatles, was called Apple. He took that from the Beatles. So you can, you can adapt uh, somebody else's ideas to yours. I'm not saying steal their ideas, but ask yourself, for instance, what would Steve Jobs do if he owned my business? That's going to generate ideas. You're going to start thinking. Or if you don't, you know, what would Jimmy Buffett do? Right now, he'd be having a margarita. But that's okay. Think about what somebody you admire or that's doing what you want to do and doing it better, what would they do? So you can come up with great ideas. It's what a lot of people in this industry are good at. Meeting planners, by nature, have to be quick thinkers. You have to think on your feet, put out fires, solve problems on the spot. I mean, things are happening at a wedding so fast, it's just always something, right? And you just, you're, you're the best meeting planners are planners, but they also are ready when something doesn't go according to plan. That's what we want for you. I learned how to be a quick thinker from my father. I would always look at him and say, how do you do that? How do you, he would just, out of nowhere, you saw some of his inventions, but he was very successful in business um, and just always had ideas. He would invent something and then just take it to market and just become very, it, always great ideas. How did he do that? And I would just admire it. I couldn't figure it out. I thought, I thought is it in my DNA? And, I was, and it wasn't. I had to learn how to do it by watching him. And so Warren Zevon wrote a song um, knowing he was dying of lung cancer, and he wrote this song for his fans and his family and his friends. And uh, in this song, there's a, a line, a lyric that says, sometimes when you're doing simple things around the house, you'll think of me and smile. And so when I was thinking about this speech and um, putting it together, I thought about my dad and how I learned from him, and I'm trying to pass on how to be a quick thinker. A lot of these skills, I just observed him apply these in his life and, and in his business, and he was an amazing person. He was my hero. And so um, I worked with my father. I worked for my father. We worked side by side. Um, I was the oldest of three sons, very close with my dad. And um, one day he was cutting the trees away from the house to try and not have to pay the painters to do, and he fell off his ladder, and he landed on his side, and he just could not move or breathe. And, but he wouldn't go to the hospital. So my brothers and I, we were quick thinkers. We kidnapped him in his pajamas on a Friday, and we took him to uh, the hospital, Sharp. And they ran a bunch of tests, and we thought for sure he'd broken a rib or punctured a lung. And they came back and said, nope, your father has stage four lung cancer and has maybe three days left to live, and that's it. And so what I did was I wrote down all these things that I loved about my dad and all the things I remembered, but also I thanked him for teaching me the most important skill in life, I think is to be able to solve problems. That's what people pay for. That's what people want. People want problem solvers. And I learned that from my father, and I, I thanked him for that. So I was going away for a speech. Uh, so Friday he was diagnosed, and Sunday I left on a plane, and the last thing I ever said to my father is, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll rush back as soon as I can. And he had passed away um, that night. Um, and so I always try to show my dad, hey, I want to be like you, dad. And I would try and use my, what I learned from him and apply it. And I had a lot of success at a young age. You heard from Stephanie in my introduction, a lot of success. But my dad never acknowledged it, never once said, I'm proud of you. You've done great, son. Not once. Well, at his celebration of life, um, somebody came up to me and pulled me aside, a friend, and said, you know what? Your dad was so proud of you. He admired, of all things, your ability to think fast. I wish he would have told me. I wish I would have heard it from him. But I did finally hear it. When we get together, a group like this, all of us in the same industry, the meeting industry, when you leave today, tell someone, I, I enjoyed your company. I admire what you do. Not in a creepy way, but in a way. <laughs> and make it known that we're all in this together. And you know, if you, don't, you can't think of an idea, connect with somebody. Grab a business card, get an email address, and you could brainstorm whether you're in Orange County or San Diego or, or San Francisco. Keep that connection going, because that's where quick thinking can really help when you connect with somebody else who gets it, like the people in this room. So when you think about what audience would a speaker want to speak to, this is the ultimate audience. Meeting planners are the greatest. So uh, I toast you. You are a fantastic audience. Thank you so much. 
for letting me close out your conference. I appreciate it. Thanks. Just finished watching Lee Silber. What a great presentation. I haven't laughed that hard in so long and got a lot of great tips. Lee was an incredibly engaging speaker. He spoke to everyone in the audience, gave a lot of different ideas, quotes, funny pictures. He really knew how to just wrap, to, wrap together all the ideas of the day uh, and send everyone home in a good mood and with a lot of good ideas. It was a great way to wrap up our session, a great closing keynote. He made us laugh. He almost brought me to tears. So it was a round of emotions, good information on quick thinking and how to use people more, use teams more and do quick thinking with everybody. I would love to have him back again some other time.